Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today, I want to talk about boosters and, to a small degree, command stations, because every command station has a booster built in. So, stick around and we'll get started in just a second. So, just what is a booster? Well, in DCC systems, uh, command stations are the devices that actually take the commands from your throttle and, and add that to all of the programming uh, internally in them, and they create a DCC signal that goes out to the track to control your locomotives and accessories and the like. Now, that DCC signal that the command station initially creates is a low voltage, low amperage version of what eventually goes out uh, on the tracks. And in order to get it up to the desired uh, voltage and amperage that we want, uh, it has to be boosted to that value. And that's why they're called boosters. That's what they do. They take whatever uh, voltage and amperage that we supply uh, from a power supply, and they mix it with the DCC signal that you can see right here. This is a, a representation of what the DCC signal looks like. And they boost it up to the desired voltage. Now, some uh, systems, like the Digitrack system, like this one here, has a set of selection switches right here on the front that allows you to select between N and HO. And uh, let me get it straight here. Uh, they've got a setting for N, they've got a setting for HO, and they have a setting for O and G. They have those settings on the face of the unit. And this is something that Digitrax has always had on their uh, command stations and boosters. Now, why am I adding con uh, command stations to this discussion? Well, because every command station that I'm familiar with now has a booster built in. So that even something like the uh, power cab has both a command station board built in as well as a booster. So it produces about 14 and a half volts on the track. And that's basically what they do. Now, there are some other little niceties that come along with it. A lot of the Digitrex command stations can be converted to boosters. So by simply changing op switch two in this unit, it can be turned into a booster. So if I have two of these, then I can use one as the command station and one as the booster as a backup. Fortunately, I have a few of these that I've collected over the years. So this is a DCS200 command station. I can use it as a booster because it's an 8 amp unit, okay? So that's what I am planning to do with one of these. And I'll keep my DCS210 as a backup command station in case my 240 goes out. Okay, one thing I just touched upon was the fact that with Digitrack systems, you can actively change the output or track voltage. Now, that is not true for all systems. For example, the NCE power cab is what I call a voltage follower. And that means that the voltage coming out and going to the track is going to be about a half a volt lower than the voltage you put in. So if you give it 15 volts, you're going to get about 14 and a half volts out. And if you give it 16 volts, you're going to get 15 and a half. Uh, the uh, DigiKeys DR5000, for example, uh, they recommend using a 19 and a half volt input and getting 18 volts out. Personally, I think I would switch the voltage down a bit. And you can do that. And you can make those kind of adjustments. And generally, uh, there are a number of, of systems available still that do that. They're power followers or voltage followers, however you want to call it. So if you have an in-scale layout, then you need to be aware uh, if your DCC system is going to put out 18 volts on the track. And uh, that can happen with some of these systems. So always read the manual, check to make sure. Now, as I've said, uh, systems like the uh, Digitrax system here, uh, they allow you to select a range of, of voltages. With this one, if you put it on HO, the default setting is about 14.7, and it can go from, I think, 14.5 to 18 volts on HO. And you can go use your throttle to actively change 
what the, uh, the that voltage is. On the standard NCE uh, uh, systems, they do internally allow you to use a trim pot to adjust the output voltage. Up until about five years ago, uh, most DCC systems operated off either AC or DC input power to them. So it didn't matter, you could use either and they would convert it internally to what they needed. Uh, then about five years ago or so, I'm not exactly sure of the date, due to energy efficiency requirements that started popping up around the world, uh, manufacturers caught on and they started switching to DC only. So that uh, for higher efficiency uh, systems, they decided to go with a DC power input. And these uh, generally use a switching power supply and these are much more efficient than your standard old uh, transformer that you could pick up, you know, at, at Radio Shack and use to make a, a power supply for your DCC system. So that's something to be aware of. You can't use any more uh, AC power supplies for a lot of the newer DCC systems. And that's true of Digitrax and has been for about five years ago. I think on the DCS 51 uh, version for the Zephyr was when they switched uh, to DC as a power supply only. And so if you're buying a new uh, Digitrax uh, DCS 240 or one of the uh, DCS 210s or one of their DB 200 uh, uh, boosters, then you need to have a DC power supply for that. Now another issue related to power uh, input is heat generation. And that's something I've talked about in previous videos. I did one on uh, keeping your DCC system cool, and I'll add a link to that here. I also talked about it when I showed you how to build a, uh, an enclosure for a DCC system in a couple of videos recently, and I will add links to those also uh, above me here and at the end of the video. So take a look at those if you don't remember what I said. At any rate, what happens is, when, a, uh, when you uh, put in uh, a certain voltage uh, into a uh, DCC booster, let's say you're, you're supplying an 18 volt DC uh, uh, power to the system, uh, and you want 14 volts at the track, okay? That booster has to get rid of 14 volts, and it does it through uh, heat. It converts it to heat energy, okay? And, and when that happens, the heat builds up inside the case on these. And that's why Digitrax has been using these big uh, heat sink fins on the back of their systems for years. Now, uh, as I've shown you previously, MRC went the route of including a fan on their boosters and command stations to keep them cooler. And uh, various other companies have, have uh, other schemes as well. Uh, the Unfortunately for the uh, power cab, the little booster in here it can actually get physically warm uh, after you've been running trains for a little while, even though it's probably only putting out about two amps. Uh, but it has to dissipate some of the excess heat that's generated when it converts that higher voltage to a lower voltage value to go out to your system. So, you know, that's one of the reasons that I say it's very important to either, you know, uh, as I showed in previous videos, use an external fan blowing directly on the case to help it keep cool, or use a, an enclosure like I showed how to build with a fan built into it to help keep it cool as well. So those are a couple of things that you can do. And, you know, in my video that I did recently on power management, I showed how you can get a lot more use out of your boosters and your command stations by you know, balancing the power use around your layout. And the downside of that is that it allows you to work your command stations and boosters at a much higher level of, of, of percentage of the time that they're putting out power. So they're going to be operating uh, more and more of the time closer to their maximum output level. And, you know, if you've ever read the manuals, you've seen that in most cases, they will tell you up front in the manual somewhere for most 5 amp boosters and command stations, uh, they are rated at a 3 amps continuous output and 5 amps in spurts, okay, but not continuously. And that's simply because once you get above about 3 amps continuous 
you're going to be heating up the inside of those con of those uh, cases so much that it's going to shut down. There are sensors built in there, and when they go above a certain temperature, they will shut your booster or your command station off. So that's why it's important to keep them cool. And a small fan is a very good way to do that. And, you know, Digitrax has been recommending this in their literature for 20 years at least that I can remember. So it's not something new. It's not something I came up with. I learned it from Digitrax. So in that case, bigger is not always better. So you're much better. I typically recommend to people that they go with a power supply that uh, that puts out about one half to one and a half volts more than what the system, uh, than what you want at the track. And you need to check the literature that comes with your booster or command station to find out what they say. Because in the specifications, they typically tell you that the output voltage is going to be a half a volt below the, uh, the uh, input. Digitrack says that in theirs now. Uh, the DigiKeys DR5000, they say it's going to be about a volt and a half below uh, the input. So you need to know that up front when you are choosing a power supply for your system. Now I typically run my uh, systems at somewhere between 14 and 14 and a half volts. Therefore I use a 15 volt DC power supply for all of my boosters and command stations in order to get that and keep the heat build up uh, down as much as possible. Now one final issue I want to uh, touch on is, is grounding. Now on all of these systems you'll see there is a ground value here. On all of the Digitrax it's right up front there is a connection supplied to ground these devices. And I know that Digitrax recommends uh, an external ground as does NCE. Uh, various others do not and uh, recommend uh, for that. Um, so that's one of those cases where you have to read your manual. Now, why do they require, do they suggest that you use an external ground? Well, there's two reasons. First of all, if you're connecting a booster and a command station together, then you need a reference ground between the two because ground is not always zero. Okay, it can float around that value. So this guy here in the command station needs to know what this guy over here in the booster is doing with respect to its voltage internally. And it can take that uh, difference in, in voltage into consideration when it's doing things like auto-reversing and not tripping when a locomotive crosses between one district and another. And the same thing goes with uh, um, auto-reversing sections. For example, uh, the Digitrax PM42 that I showed in uh, uh, a previous video uh, requires a ground connection to the command station or booster so that it can work properly. It will not trip properly unless it has a ground reference. So you need to be able to provide that with Digitrack systems. And NCE also um, recommends that. If you look at their diagrams in their manuals, they will show you a ground reference between the various components. Other systems like MRC, I believe they use the ground that is in their network cable uh, for their reference ground. They do not have an external. Even a, a company like uh, Tam Valley, uh, who make the frog juicers, they produce this little nice little bo booster here that you can use with other systems. And they also provide a ground connection on it so that it can be used with systems that require a, uh, a ground. Um, so how does this work? Well, basically you just run a ground between the two ground connections here. Uh, and I use a, about a 14 gauge wire to run between all of these. And if they're next to each other, that's fine. It's very easy. Otherwise, you need to run a long wire, you know, from one to the next around the layout to connect all of these uh, components that require a reference ground connection. The other question that comes up often is what about connecting it to a true earth ground, such as the, the ground connection on outlets in your house? or a cold water pipe, or the, uh, the ground, uh, true earth ground uh, in your household electrical system. Uh, different companies, different people will tell you to do it. Others will tell you not to do it. Digitrax in their manuals, and I checked this just a few minutes ago, they recommend a connection between the ground uh, that you're using on your system and the household ground. Uh, the idea being uh, for that is that 
in addition to the ground reference, um, if you have a lot of static buildup in your in your house, uh, particularly in the winter time when we're doing most of our operating, you know for a fact you can walk around and touch a doorknob or something like that and, and you'll get a little shock. Well, the same thing can happen with your throttles and, and other equipment. If you're holding those, you can pass on a static electric charge into your DCC system. And the ground reference uh, uh, gives you a way of uh, of dissipating that static charge that can build up in DCC systems and create little problems uh, if it's connected to your household ground point. At any rate, what you need to do is pay attention to your uh, manuals, read your manuals about grounding, okay, and see if your DCC system needs it and, uh, you know, follow their uh, tech support people's recommendations. Always, as I've said before, anytime there's a question like this that comes up, always check with your company or your DCC manufacturers, tech support people, and find out what their recommendations are. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, go ahead, have a good week, and if you have any questions concerning boosters and, and the like, go ahead and add them to the comment section, and I'll try to get an answer for you on that. In the meantime, have a good week, and uh, stay healthy, uh, avoid the virus, and we'll see you again on Friday with a new video.